I know we've we've spoke behind the scenes uh, briefly. There's, um, uh, you know, we it's creators that you go way back with. We talked about Mike, our, our man's uh, B- Billy Tucci, uh, Graham Nola. I remember you and Amanda was on Storytellers with with our man's. Uh, Amanda went to uh, Cuban school with him. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. it's cool, kind of watching all that connect. But obviously, there's been this sort of um, uh, OGs, as I, as I call them out here, creators like yourself that have been around the block for a very long time, and they found their their way in doing uh, and continuing to create it may not be for the mainstream, but they've seen a lot of success. Can you speak to kind of that, that shift there where it be with crowdfunding, which has completely changed the game and lower the barrier of entry and allow creators to do all these different things. Uh, you've done a bunch uh, yourself as well, but just in comparison to how work has traditionally been, been done uh, back when you were coming up at like the nineties versus what we have now, like, speak to that dynamic or rather that just sure. complete difference uh that, that that we see now sure i mean in the 90s we had image comics right and and those guys they really need a lot got got to get a lot of credit for saying you know what we're gonna just do our own thing and own it ourselves and it was a gigantic step and you know i i think a bigger risk than they even thought they um they went on pure adrenaline not knowing where it would go yeah um but you know, for a long time, uh, we, we and, and, you know, there was only Marvel and DC, right? And then there's some other company like Dark Horse and other companies. And, you know, but they own the characters, right? So you have a, you have a certain amount of talent that grows up saying, you know what? One day I'm going to write or draw a Spider-Man. And one day I'm going to do Batman. And I get that, you know, and it's great when you can do that. You get a chance. And then hopefully I always say you move on from it. You're like, all right, I did it. Now I can move on. Um it's be, and of course, that's realistic because we grew up with these characters. Yeah, the absolutely. idea of writing one of them is exciting. For me, it was, you know, a lot of different characters I got to work on. Um, but I started looking at it, and I, I guess I mentioned it earlier that I was in advertising. I was in a, a different business where I ran a business. And that part of me wanted to own my own stuff, you know. And the creator-owned deals that they had were not really... They were not creative controlled because even though they were giving you a percentage of the stuff, they still controlled the media rights and everything. And a lot of and the and the biggest problem they did, which which we which I actually uh, felt, was that even when we did the creator on things, where creator shared, we call it creator shared, where we own the piece of it, they would run the media part, and half of the time they wouldn't include us. Mm. You know, they would they would say, well, you know, you created the book, you're good, we'll have a set visit for you. You know, you'll get to visit the set or something. And that was supposed to keep us, oh, you know, fine. Because we make movies, you guys don't know what you're doing, you know. Or this is our character. Even though you did a story that we're now adapting the movie, we don't really need you for that. But we'll give you a thank you at the end of the credits. Right? <laughs> thank you. And Or sometimes you'll get a check. And it's a check. It's a minimum check. I would I would say I'd rather have the guy, the, lim- the guy who drove the car, the movie started the set back and forth, for the whole movie shoot, I'd rather have his pay than what they give me for a bonus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, as the years went on, we see this more and more, you know, um, and there was, but there wasn't really a way, a place to go. You can go to image and do it. And image is great. Don't get me wrong. Image is terrific. You can bring your book to them. They'll sell it and everything, but you know, there is a fee and there is a, you know, you have to, they have to choose to do it or not. And again, you had to bring the book in done. And the problem with having, making a living and having a family and all that stuff is, you know, you have to throw thousands and thousands of dollars into the production Mm -hmm. and then you have to hope it sells or not. And it's a risk. I was looking for something different. I was looking for another way to doing the books besides self publishing because self publishing is tough because you have to deal with a middleman and then a retailer. So there's actually two middlemen. Yep. 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 I say it all the the time. Yeah. Before I get books to somebody. Right. Um, retailer and then uh, and then uh, company, you know, and there's just so much involved. And I always felt like creators energy should be creating, not so much production. Mm-hmm. Um, Agree. And then I, I read, I think it was like 2011 or 12. I read this whole article about this new company in Brooklyn. It started called Kickstarter and how they would crowdfund, how, it, how you can bring a project, yada, 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 you know, you know, the drill. And, and then the people can back it if they like it. And then that, and then you can deal directly with the audience. So I tried it. I, I did a book called Queen Crab and it actually funded pretty quick and I got the book out. And then I, I've done 20 something after yeah. since it. 
Um, but I found that I found that being doing this, I'm able to control all the rights to everything I do. Um, I pay my team, and then if I make extra money, I give it to my team. I share with my creators, and I'm able to take care of my group. And I never stop doing the uh, mainstream books, meaning I, I do these books. And like right now, I'm, I'm working on Deadly Tales of the Gunslinger for Todd McFarlane. So I'm still, I'm doing a monthly book for Todd because I can and because I love that character and I like working with Todd. Um, but I get to do these crowdfunding things and create and, re, and retain the rights. And while I was doing it, I had a bunch of friends, Brian Polito, Billy, a whole bunch of people asking me, how do you do this? What should I do? And I said, look, I've done enough that I'm going to tell you. You're going to lose your shirt if you start, you know, putting this. Don't do this. Don't do that. I learned, like, I have a giant list <laughs> of how not to do it. The other side of it is, I said, we're going to build, we we actually build up a crowd of people that actually believe in what you do and the books you do. And don't get me wrong. It's 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 just as not, just as much work, if not more work. Oh, I'd argue it's more. Than just working yeah. somebody. Yeah. Working with somebody. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, I, I'm a I'm a production guy. I, I make sure my books look amazing. The art's great. The story is as best as I can do. Um, and it just changed the field. It's changing the field now because, remember, there was a time when the alternate cover game was basically for smaller companies to do to try to get the numbers up. Once the big two took that on, they went crazy. Oh, man, I they mean, went insane with it. <laughs> right. So and and the problem with that is it's energy spent on covers and not on content. Mm. And um, it's you know and I and I get it because these are both these giant companies are are basically owned by stockholders and so their incentive isn't always to take care of creators. It's more to take care of the stockholders first, and that's a basic law of business. I don't hold it against them. That's the way they do their business. But you have creators that are expecting these companies to take care of them. And those expectations now have to be thrown out the window. Now they have to understand it's a freelance gig. You work until they don't need you. The minute they don't need you, you're done. You you, you know, good luck. Um, there's no job security in comic books. Mm. Um, it's just not it's just not there. And I learned that my security in my career and Amanda's career is basically the people that support us. Yes. Those are the people, not the companies, because the companies never paid for my medical coverage. They never sent me on vacation and they never gave me a 401k. Okay. But I do that for myself and Amanda, you know? And um, so, I, so I realized that you just have to be, it's not like anybody's bad guys or good guys. What it is, is it's a different business model. Yeah. Yeah. And complaining about it's a waste of time because you literally can just say no. To the work that's offered to you. True. I, I think it's it's sort of like you know it's sort of like saying uh, going skydiving and complaining while you're in the plane. Going, you know, I can't. You guys are making me do this. Like, hey, dude, you you signed up for skydiving and you got in the plane. <laughs> you have to know we're going to throw you out the door right now. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in a way, when you work for the companies, you understand that if you do a cover for them, charge what you got to charge, make yourself happy, be content with it, because that's pretty much all it's going to do. When you see it on the box of a toy, when you see a figure, understand you may or may not get a dime from it. Um, yeah. You know, I was just looking at a Funko Pop they did from a cover uh, Mark Texera and I drew, and they made a Funko Pop. It has my name on the box and everything. I haven't seen a dime of it. That's I haven't crazy. gotten a copy of the Funko Pop. That's crazy. So that kind of gives you the re that's the reality of it. As much as people, the only money I make is when people come to a con and they give me five dollars to sign that Funko Pop. That's the only money I make <laughs> off that Funko Pop. That's that's but, crazy. But you just got to be realistic. Like I said, it doesn't have to be about anger, or pissed off, or pointing fingers. That's just the way. When you go in that house, you get hit in the head with a bat. When you yeah. go in that house, you get hit in the head with a hammer. Understand that these houses. You should know what it is by now. And game. again, I think the people coming in maybe have a more realistic attitude of what the companies do for them. Um, I definitely had to learn the hard way, you know, a lot of hard work and, uh, you know, getting compensated like as a, as a, an afterthought, or I had to ask for something. And there's nothing worse than when you have to make a call and ask so they can put a thank you at the end of a, a movie thing based on something you worked on and you don't get it, you know, you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm hoping the companies treat people better now, but people also have to understand that corporations and 
they're owned by stockholders. It's not one person up there. It's thousands of people looking at a, 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 a thing they get every month that says the stock went up two points or whatever. Um, so, yeah, so I, I as much as I love work and I do love working for different companies, I support also the creators doing their own work. And nobody can say I can't because just look how many Kickstarters I back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's you like know? 300 plus, um, isn't it? <laughs> it's just, you know, it's look what you do. You're, you're launching these characters. You got great people working for you. You know, it's. It's just going to, it's a new world. And um, I'm hoping more people, I'm hoping we can gain more people's trust. Because when I started, there were creators that didn't fulfill their Kickstarters or they didn't fulfill their Indiegogo campaigns. And I would have that thrown in my yeah, face. Yeah, that's the time. thing that sucks. They, they try to apply yeah. that to you as well. So it sours kind of the bunch. I get, I get that, yeah. Right. And, 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 and I always say to them, I'm like, talk to anybody that's backed them. There's, I don't have one. I, I actually ask the companies, can we do a rating? thing because i would love for people to to mm. google rate my uh kickstarters in a way but i i you know i I've, I've always delivered for everybody and if anyone ever had a concern i would just email them when we talk it out and i get them on the phone and say okay how can we make this right by you um because you you know as well as i do eric the, the customer is king man yeah all day you know, long if they're happy i'm happy and and we can get back to work that's what it's about yeah Thanks for watching. Be sure to head over to Ripperverse.com to check out our comic book company. We have books, plenty of merchandise, and even some glorious animations from Ripperverse Studios. Next up, possibly our most anticipated book thus far, Yaira.